Hello, hello again. So with uh, the whole pandemic and whatnot, uh, a good amount of us are working from home, including me, and we've turned to you know, Zoom and Teams. Skype's kind of left the playing field with Microsoft discontinuing it. I think they already have at the time of the recording of this video. And I see a lot of people asking for ways to do something with auto hotkeys and either Zoom or Teams and whatnot. So I was going to show a few little things that I have done with auto hotkeys for myself. Um, you know, auto hotkeys, you know, runs with hotkeys. Zoom, Teams, they have built-in hotkeys, but I can never really remember what they are. You know, it's like control, all, A does something, and I, I could just never remember what they are. So I wanted a visual, a GUI, that I can just easily press the button and have it do what I want. So yeah, let's take a look at this code, and hopefully it can help you guys in your workplace also. Or school, I guess, if you're a, a teacher or student. Let me know if you are. I'd actually be kind of curious to see if any of this gets used for that kind of stuff. So uh, starting right off the bat, I'm going to do set title match mode 2, which I do in pretty much all my scripts, just to help me uh, with naming. So I got my GUI that's going to pop up first with just the hotkey F1. Uh, I don't want a caption on that just because then it's taking up less space. And I also obviously want it always on top just so I'm not worrying about, you know, having to go down to the bottom and bring it to the forward. I can just have easy access to it, whatnot. So the GUI is pretty straightforward. Uh, it's very skinny, just to be a space saver. Got a few options here. So I'm actually going to go ahead and run it so we can visually see it. And there we go. Um, so I have my X and Y coordinates. Whoops. What just happened there? Uh, set there. Um, I recommend just putting that 0 and 0. That way it's all the way in the top uh, left corner here. But I'm only recording part of my screen, so that's why those coordinates are there. Um, really depends on you. Uh, you can't really move it because I have that caption off. If you do want the ability to move it, just delete this uh, caption thing right here and you'll be good to go. But it does take up, obviously, a little bit more space. So I got mute, unmute, mute all but the host. Now, this, I believe, only works in Zoom at the moment. Teams does not support this, unfortunately. But I just put it on there, depending on what app I'm using. I, you know, just have everything in there. But it's good to remember that that wouldn't work in there. Uh, pause my screen share. Maybe you need to enter your username and password. You don't really want a lot of people seeing that. You can just push that real quick so they can't see, and then push it again to unpause it. Uh, take a screenshot. It's pretty self-explanatory. And uh, find someone. That just basically opens up Teams, automatically snaps to the search bar, fills in a name, depending on how you want that name to be found. You can hard-code it in. You can maybe have an input box. Or if you... I guess it would make more sense to have it like maybe you highlight someone's name in a document, push that button, and then it'll just automatically jump to Teams, find them, and start a chat with them. Uh, toggle blur. Uh, basically, that just blurs out your background so that they can only see the window that's active. Um, that you know, it helps with keeping focus on what you're really talking about. Don't use that too much, but it's a pretty cool thing. And then I have a close button here with just an X because I do not have the normal toolbar X up here because I got rid of it. Uh, if you do decide to, like I was saying, get rid of this caption, then you can just either replace this button with something else or just get rid of it entirely. Uh, name doesn't really matter, honestly, because I can't see it, so don't really need that. But yeah, um, they're pretty simple. Uh, obviously, close is just going to be GUI destroy. That's going to close it. If you want it to, you can even add a you know, like exit app to have it shut down instead, you know, to whatever you want to do. I'll leave that in there in case you guys want that, because I always put my code in the description below. Uh, we're going to jump down here to the muter with this handler. That's just going to, obviously I want to win activate teams, make sure I'm focusing on the correct window. I'm not in Chrome and having it send control shift M here. Don't want to do that. Um, so that's going to mute you or unmute you. 
mute all but hosts. Like I said, I'm pretty sure this only works in Zoom. If it does work in Teams, definitely comment below. I'm uh, pretty sure it doesn't. I mean, there might be an update coming out. That would be super useful for Teams, I would think. So hopefully they get around to that. Uh, and that's just going to control M there, or Alt-M. Do that. Now, also to point out, uh, these might be different if you're on a Mac computer, obviously. Uh, I don't think they have, I think it's the Alt or the Control they don't have. They have uh, whatever that Apple symbol is. I don't have a Mac. I haven't in quite a while. Nothing against them. I used to love them. But I became a gamer, so it didn't really work out for me. Uh, pause screen share. That's just going to send Alt-T. Uh, screenshot. That's just going to send uh, Alt-Shift-T. And it looks like I actually forgot to put the Win Activate here. That's fine. Um, so this one gets a little bit different. All the other ones were pretty simple. Uh, so this is the one where you want to find somebody. So it's going to activate Teams. It's going to send... Um, control E, which targets the search bar at the top there. So put your cursor in there so it's ready to type. Uh, it's going to send backspace two times. The reason that's there is if you're currently in a chat with somebody and you try to use this, it's going to autofill their name into that search bar because it thinks you're trying to search that chat specifically. If you are, then you can just delete this uh, line here and have it search, you know, whatever. Um, but we want to just search our whole, you know, company-wide name list there, not that individual chat specifically. We're then going to send return. So then, you know, it found the name. It's going to go ahead. And then, well, actually, I guess you need to put your send here of, you know, who you're looking for. So if you want to hard code your name in there, you can, if you want to have it maybe as, um, let's say you go find someone. We'll do sing control C. So let's say you highlight someone's name in like a document or an email. It's going to copy that. Then it's going to do all that same thing. And then it's going to do control V. It's going to find that person's name and it's going to automatically send them a message. Good, good morning, what's today's goals? Once again, change this to whatever you want. If you want to hard code it, uh, maybe somehow have a input box here, which I guess wouldn't really be useful since you, you'd have an input box in Teams. So probably just hard coding, I would think. Maybe you have a common message that you need to send multiple times throughout the day and you're tired of typing it out or having it in a notepad and copy and pasting it over. And then we're going to push send. Uh, which is just the return key, and that's it. So this one just got a little bit more complicated. There's a lot of playing around with this one, depending on what you want to do. I think this way would be the most useful, at least for me. If I'm in an email and I'm like, hey, I need to you know, reach out to this person, I can just highlight their signature name, and then boom, search for it, and have it you know, send whatever. Maybe it would say, like, hey, are you, do you got a quick minute for a phone call or something? And then toggle the background blur. That's just uh, doing the control shift P there. So that's pretty easy. So that's pretty much it for Zoom or uh, Teams. Um, I do have some Zoom code that I kind of Frankenstein together here. Uh, unfortunately, I do not have Zoom. We don't really use it at work. We're pretty happy with just Teams. So I unfortunately can't really demo this out to you very well but I can kind of break the code down and uh, hopefully I can help you if you have any questions or run into any problems with this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have some input boxes pop up there. The first one's just saying, please enter your token. Um, and the next one's just your ID. So obviously your ID is your username, uh, or I believe you also do have an actual like numeric uh, ID that you can use. So a token is like this really long kind of like string of letters and numbers and you can get that by going to the zoom app marketplace signing up go to develop build app jwt right here and when you get here 
you're just uh, if you don't already have one, you're just going to create a new you know app. You're going to go to app credentials, and I do not have it right here, but there will be your uh, token key there, and you're just going to copy and paste that in. And based off what my friend was telling me, uh, when you create a token, you can set a time limit on how long it's valid for. Uh, he said it could be anywhere from like about an hour to up to you know like a few years. Uh, depending what you want to do so that's kind of cool i think you can have them expire so that maybe your auto hotkey function stops working until they request a new token from you you know or whatever or you can just make it last forever so you only have to update it every so often but unfortunately i cannot show you that part but at least you know where to go so uh we're gonna have the endpoint here which uh right here it's just adding your um your, your username into this little field. It's hard to see when I hover over there, but that's going to do that. You know, here we're calling upon the Git, getting all the information set up for us and whatnot. Value and run. Okay, so here's the data we're looking for. So we basically want to look at a meeting specifically that maybe we have scheduled coming up, and we want to know who all is going to be attending. So we, we just want to grab the first name and the last name of, you know, everybody that's going to be there. So here's where the action really takes place, I guess you could say. So here's where we're going to do the call. Um, you know, it's taken a lot of that information we've entered up above and whatnot, stuff we need. Um, sorry I can't go into a lot of detail about this stuff because I've never really gotten to play much with this. But here's where we're uh, setting up our comm, you know, get ready. Uh, we're going to send some of that open open uh, you know connection with it. And then here's where it's going to actually kind of log in for you with that token that you got. So it's pinpointing at that app that you created. And it's pretty easy to make an app. I, I was actually really impressed with that, even though I didn't you know fully finish it. Hopefully the rest of it's pretty easy. And it's going to do a JSON uh, inquiry there to grab all that information you need. And then it's going to send the information that we are trying to get. Then you're going to get your results back, kind of when it responds uh, with your text. Uh, it's going to be using the JSON. You do need to have um, this library uh, installed, which I'll link in the description below. And uh, that's how kind of it's using that library to help it, you know, do the final phase there. And for me, I just use the message box results. You know, obviously you can use uh, a GUI or maybe just have it directly saved to a text file, you know, whatever you want to do, save it, you know, it's already in a variable, you know, do what you will with that variable. I've done tons of videos with how to save information or send information through email or, you know, to a text file. So yeah, sorry, unfortunately, I can't really show you too much about this, but this is a pretty simple one. There's a ton of other different kind of information you can grab here besides first name and last name. You can get a total count of people who are attending, how many, you know, like accept it. You can get the time, the dates, uh, pretty much inf information that goes into creating that uh, meeting or video chat or whatever you can grab and these are pretty easy just to google and find out what kind of uh, value there are um, from their website they have like a whole api section that's uh it's okay it's kind of hard to understand um but you can eventually find what you need uh, digging through all those uh, documents that they have there all right um if you guys have any questions about any of the stuff i showed here definitely hit me up in the comments below if any of you guys get a chance to check out this last part of the code with Zoom and just, you know, if there's any issues in the code or different ways you found to doing it, definitely hit me up about those. I would love to follow up on these. I guess at some point I'll just create like a fake um, Zoom account and another one so I can do an actual like meeting and see how all that goes. So yeah, let me know what you guys think about this second part if you get a chance. And definitely hit that subscribe button. You know, I'm pumping out usually about two to three videos every week, jumping around all types of auto hockey stuff and uh, tutorials. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. See you next one.